Good evening friends. Welcome to my channel. A peek into the English language. Rina scrutinized the vast expanse of water that stretched endlessly against the cerulean sky. It was a blustery evening, and the flickering of neon lights in the distance made her feel homesick. Her head hung in defeat as she thought about the war-stricken land that she had left. A month ago, she felt solicitous when memories of her family came rushing to the gate of her mind. Civil war that had raged through her homeland had led to massive-scale destruction and devastation of her birthplace, Avalon. Cyclopean buildings had crumbled down like gigantic monsters that stood low in shame and humility. A deluge of nuclear bombs had been intermittently dropped on the city of Avalon by the rebels, causing throngs of humanity to flee to the Chick by Joel city of Camelot. In search of refuge, the exodus of its population transformed Avalon into an eerie ghost town, where scavengers such as hyenas prowled as night descended on the city. In a short duration of time, 
vines invaded all buildings and parts of this abandoned city, creating a green paradise. The American war sloop was taking a group of refugees from the chaotic battlefields of Ukraine, a country nestled on the eastern part of the Balkan range to a tranquil land which flowed with milk and honey. Rina looked at the myriad of once fresh rosebuds that lay at her feet. Their beauty had been stolen by time and the elements of nature. These lovely flowers had been thrust into her arms by her fiancé, Jim, the day they stood on the rickety plank bridge to bid goodbye to each other. Tears glistened in Jim's blue eyes as he stood there in the shadow of the evening, trying to memorize every line and curve of his beloved's face. As the sloop anchored at the port of New Orleans, Rina gathered her belongings and walked aimlessly to the nearest cafeteria. She ordered a pot of tea and some sweet buns. She was determined to find a job in the bustling city. When the war was over, she would return to her motherland to look for the man she loved. Thank you. Not the mama, 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 not the mama. You do that one more time and I'm going to throw you across the room. Not the mama! Ah! Wee, oof. Again! Want to give daddy a kiss? Not the mama, not the mama. That is starting to bother me. Not the mother, not the mother. <sighs> no, that's not it at all. Good morning, my family who loves me. Not the mama. All right, that ends right now. I have had it up to here with this not the mama. I am not not the mama. I'm your daddy. And you only get one, Buster. And that is what you're going to call me. Daddy. Now say daddy. Say daddy. Okay. All right. All right. Say da. Da. Say di. Di. Da. Da. Di. Di. Daddy. Daddy. Franny. Daddy. <laughs> Fred. Daddy. He loves me. Listen to him. Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> da, da, daddy. Da, daddy. 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 Not the mama. Good morning friends, welcome to my channel, A Peek into the English Language. Today, I'm going to teach you how to write an essay that begins with the following words. Imi woke up in anticipation. Imi woke up in anticipation when the alarm clock that stood on her dresser jolted her from a deep slumber. A plethora of shadows fell on the floor of a cozy bedroom, creating intricate patterns. Crepuscular rays flooded into the room through a chink between the silk curtains that adorned the frosty French window. In the distance, a rooster crowed as if welcoming the arrival of a brand new day. Freeing her limbs from the labyrinth of pillows and blankets, Amy jumped out of her bed. Groggily, she walked towards the window to luxuriate in the scintillating vista that stretched endlessly before her eyes. 
I may inhale the sweet scent of jasmines that wafted through her room as she scrutinized the landscape. A few calves were grazing on the verdant slopes of the lofty mountain that loomed over her village. Fluffy white clouds were marching across the vast expanse of the azure blue sky, making the scenery look surreal. Aimee knew that Zarif was somewhere out there, plowing the ground and preparing it for the paddy planting season. It had been ages since she last set eyes on him. She had left the village five years ago to pursue a degree at the Harvard University. Arif and Aimee had been bosom friends since they were toddlers taking their very first wobbly steps across the parquet floor of Aimee's abode. They had enjoyed a unique camaraderie with each other. In the evening, they fished for trout at the Mindering Creek that ran behind their houses. When they cooked dinner down by the wooden playhouse, stones became potatoes and daisies were fried eggs. As they traversed through the troubled years of adolescence, their relationship blossomed into love. With the passage of time, Aimee's love for Zarif waned, and when she was 17 years old, she ditched him for a more sophisticated guy who resided in the city. His name was Roslan. What followed was now history. Here she was pining for the boy she had once betrayed. The voice of someone calling her name awakened Aimee from the reverie. An urchin with a smudge on his jaw tucked at his sleeves as he pushed a note into her hand. The note came from Zarif, asking her to meet him at the fringe of the forest by nightfall. Aimee was overwhelmed by happiness as she read the note, which had been scribbled hastily by Sander as he toiled in the field. Next morning, a gruesome sight greeted the villagers as they made their way into the jungle to collect firewood. Aimee's body was sprawled on the ground with deep stab wounds. Blood was oozing from the gash on her neck and forming a red pool around the corpse. In a moment of madness, Zarif had brutally murdered the woman who hurt him a long time ago. Thank you. Good evening, friends. Welcome to my channel, A Peek into the English Language. Today, we are going to discuss an essay topic. Education is the key to success. Do you agree with this statement? The word education insinuates the act of giving or receiving instruction at a school or university. It is universally acknowledged that the history of education dates back to the year 3500 BC when the hieroglyphic writing system was fully developed and utilized in Egypt. Today, education is an integral part of our existence. I strongly believe that education is the key to success as it helps children to become competent adults who are equipped with analytical minds and rational paradigms of thinking. An educated person usually relies on logic and scientific reasoning in making decisions or in rejecting superstitious beliefs. In other words, 
Education paves the way for success by helping us to overcome fear of the unknown. It also builds our confidence in handling a miscellany of issues that intimidates us. An individual whose mind is enlightened by knowledge will be able to differentiate between good and bad. Thus, education indirectly lowers the crime rate in a society. Undeniably, man has been bequeathed by the Creator with creativity, wisdom and aptitude to survive in the world. Yet, mere possession of these elements without the guidance or direction of proper education is futile. Literacy ascertains that we gain access to vital information pertaining to ethics, moral values, laws, and our surroundings. In this time and age, education is one of the prerequisites to procure a high-paying job. Hence, Unemployment is rampant among people who do not have paper qualification. The importance of education in our lives is reiterated by an English saying that goes like this. If you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man how to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. According to the World Bank, education is one of the most powerful instruments to eliminate poverty and starvation. Statistics indicate that there is a correlation between illiteracy and impoverishment in many parts of the globe. In short, Poverty prevails in places where there is a low level of literacy. The mortality rate in these places is also high as the people do not have knowledge about nutritious food, personal hygiene and contagious diseases. In conclusion, I would like to reaffirm my stand that education can be deemed to be a stepping stone to success as well an open door to a million opportunities. Thank you. Goodbye. Good morning, friends. Welcome to my channel, A Peek into the English Language. In this lesson, I want to teach you how to write an email in the correct way. Okay, here's the question. Read the given email and write a response to it. We have two from subject. This is the format, okay, that you have to follow in writing an email. Then you go on to this. Dear Farah, how are you keeping? I hope you are hale and hearty. I am sending this email to ask you for some advice with regards to my younger brother's birthday party. My brother's birthday falls on 9th April every year and this year my parents are planning to throw a tea party for him. They want to celebrate his red letter day with pomp and grandeur. I hope to hear from you soon. Regards, Angel. This is the response to that email. Dear Angel, I'm sending this email to give you a deluge of ideas on how to organize your brother's birthday party. The first thing that you should do is to make a guest list. You ought to send invitation cards 
to your friends and relatives two weeks before your brother's red letter day. You can order the birthday cake from Ellie's Corner, which is located at Jalan Orchid. Ellie's Corner also specializes in making pastries and tarts. You can buy a variety of delicacies from this bakery at any at an affordable price. Please convey my best wishes to your parents. Regards, Farah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel, A Peek into the English Language. Okay, today I'm going to write an essay. The topic of the essay is, It was only a bad nightmare. It was a sweltering day in the month of June when the flame of the forest trees were in full bloom. The air was charged with the melodious chirping of migratory birds which had travelled long distances to escape the harsh winter of China. A myriad of flowers bedecked the narrow trail that led to the heart of the jungle. My friends and I had arrived at the renowned Taman Negara Forest Reserve only a day ago. We had set camp by a meandering creek which was a tributary of the Pahang River. We embarked on an excursion to the depths of this verdant rainforest to collect specimens of flora and fauna that inhabited the forest. Unfortunately, on the second day of our trip, we strayed from the beaten trail as the sun slanted behind the mountains, throwing its mantle of crimson splendor over the serene forest. When we realized that we were lost in the labyrinth of nature, we panicked. As night fell, the forest became a hostile place which resonated a cacophony of sounds. As our group that comprised of five boys huddled under a gigantic tree with overhanging creepers, we, we heard a dog howl eerily in the distance. Once in every ten minutes, the hooting of an owl shattered the silence of the night. At around midnight, the moon rose in the sky, casting a plethora of shadows in every nook and corner of the forest. The hours dragged on, and soon all of us were lulled by the opiate of sleep. At about three o'clock in the morning, I was rudely awakened by the sounds of incessant beating of drums. A group of indigenous people, attired in colorful raiment, surrounded us. The chief of this long-forgotten tribe, who wore an elaborate headgear, which was made from the pl plumage of birds of paradise, grinned sheepishly at us as he gave orders to his men by making queer guttural sounds. In a matter of minutes, my friends and I were secured with ropes before being tied to poles. We were carried suspended from poles like some hunted animals to the settlement of this primitive tribe, which obviously had no contact with the outside world. As the natives crossed the threshold of their settlement, there was a din. The inhabitants of this secluded village started dancing around a cauldron of boiling water in what appeared to be a pagan ritual. These cannibals planned to throw us into the cauldron of hot water as a sacrificial 
offering to their pagan gods. I screamed hysterically as a native branded my arms with a piece of hot wire. When I opened my eyes, I found my friends hovering anxiously over me. They told me that they had found the trail that led to our campsite. Then I realized that it had only been a nightmare. with the given words and phrases. Construct five sentences with the given words and phrases. Set, shrouded, abode, howling, treetops, earth, neighborhood, distance, melancholically, fluorescent, light. Here are the sentences that I have made. The sun has already set behind the hill. The sun has already set behind the hill. Within seconds, the earth will be shrouded in darkness. Within seconds, the earth will be shrouded in darkness. A flight of birds are flying to their abode high above the treetops. A flight of birds are flying to their abode high above the treetops. In the distance, a dog is howling melancholically. In the distance, a dog is howling melancholically. Every house in the neighborhood is lighted up with fluorescent light. Every house in the neighborhood is lighted up with fluorescent light. Let us look at the reinforcement activity. Fill in the blank with the appropriate words and phrases. Footing, cover, deep, net, village, flock. The sun has already deep behind the horizon. Within seconds, the earth will be covered by gloom. A flock of swallows are flying to their nest high up the roof, in the distance, and all is footing incessantly. Every house in the village is lighted up with oil lamps. Thank you. See you next time. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my channel, A Peek into the English Language. Okay, today I'm going to write an essay. The topic of the essay is, It was only a bad nightmare. It was a sweltering day in the month of June when the flame of the forest trees were in full bloom. The air was charged with the melodious chirping of migratory birds, which had travelled long distances to escape the harsh winter of China. A myriad of flowers bedecked the narrow trail that led to the heart of the jungle. My friends and I had arrived at the renowned Taman Negara Forest Reserve only a day ago. We had set camp by a meandering creek which was a tributary of the Pahang River. 
we embark on an excursion to the depths of this verdant rainforest to collect specimens of flora and fauna that inhabited the forest. Unfortunately, on the second day of our trip, we strayed from the beaten trail as the sun slanted behind the mountains, throwing its mantle of crimson splendor over the serene forest. When we realized that we were lost in the labyrinth of nature, we panicked. As night fell, the forest became a hostile place, which resonated a cacophony of sounds. As our group that comprised of five boys huddled under a gigantic tree with overhanging creepers, we, we heard a dog howl eerily in the distance. Once in every ten minutes, the hooting of an owl shattered the silence of the night. At around midnight, the moon rose in the sky, casting a plethora of shadows in every nook and corner of the forest. The hours dragged on, and soon all of us were lulled by the opiate of sleep. At about three o'clock in the morning, I was rudely awakened by the sounds of incessant beating of drums. A group of indigenous people, attired in colorful raiment, surrounded us. The chief of this long-forgotten tribe, who wore an elaborate headgear, which was made from the pl plumage of birds of paradise, grinned sheepishly at us as he gave orders to his men by making queer guttural sounds. In a matter of minutes, my friends and I were secured with ropes before being tied to poles. We were carried suspended from poles like some hunted animals to the settlement of this primitive tribe, which obviously had no contact with the outside world. As the natives crossed the threshold of their settlement, there was a din. The inhabitants of this secluded village started dancing around a cauldron of boiling water in what appeared to be a pagan ritual. These cannibals planned to throw us into the cauldron of hot water as a sacrificial offering to their pagan gods. I screamed hysterically as a native branded my arms with a piece of hot wire. When I opened my eyes, I found my friends hovering anxiously over me. They told me that they had found the trail that led to our campsite. Then I realized that it had only been a nightmare.